So today we will be doing episode two, uh, which is our Visum interface introduction. So we'll go over some of the basic aspects of Visum interface and how the overall workflow in Visum goes. We plan to cover or blitz through some of these topics over here in this particular order. Uh, we'll cover something about GUI and file types in Visum. Uh, look at the IO interface, show some import and export of standard formats in Visum. We'll look at how listing and table views can be used in Visum, as well as some network editing, matrix editing, model calculation setup, graphics and mapping, and finally show you where you can get extra information with help and licensing and so forth. So starting off, we'll have a format where I'll show you a few topics or the topic introduction in a slide and then look at the live uh, demo of how it works in Visum. So the general user interface and menu layout of Visum is not very different from what you're used to seeing with most uh, travel modeling software. Uh, over here we have a screen cap of how the Visum interface generally looks like. Here we have the file, edit, view, listings, uh, the top toolbar, which allows you to perform these type of functions for import, export, call the calculation procedures, fire up the graphics interface and so forth to set up your link bars, as well as define some new network user defined attributes and such and fire up the scripting interface. Then we have the network layers toolbar. Here you select basically the network object that you want to modify or edit and then interact with the network editor as basically a point and click operation. So once you've selected a network object in the network layer, you go to the network editor, you'll edit your networks over there, create your build scenarios, or analyze any of the results in the network over here in the network editor. Then we have a quick view bar over here. This quick view editor basically shows you the properties or selected properties of the network objects that you've selected in the network and you can customize this quick view to show you either property that a certain network object has. Then we have the listing table. So all the network objects in Visum are associated with a tabular data interface. So over here, we see a zone listing, for example, with all of the headers for residential households and all of the single family units and so forth stored in the zone data. This is not that different from the DBF files that you're used to looking at, and it corresponds to that same sort of data. When you run the model, typically you will have this message log open, and this logs all of the error messages or any warnings or some model summaries and so forth down here in real time as your model runs. So this is the basic introduction on the user interface in Visum. There are many file types associated with Visum. So if you look at the screen cap of this dialog over here, you'll see lots of files that belong to Visum or Visum reads and writes. But generally speaking, there are only a few file types that you will have in your typical interaction with Visum. The most important of these file types are the PFT file, which is a working directory file, which you basically use to set up a project folder and reference that project folder. Once you reference a project folder in Visum, the project folder is then used as a relative reference. So any files that you specify for the other file types will be directly looked up into that folder. And this helps when you have kind of map network drives or project locations which have a rather long uh, look directory set up and so forth. The other important file is the version file. This is the main binary file in Visum that stores everything. So all of your network, matrices, the basic demand model structure, calculations, all of these things are stored in this one binary file and when you load up this binary file, you'll see essentially all of the data associated with the model. 
the XML file is used to specify procedure calculations. So your trip generation distribution, the call sequence of all of the calculations is specified in this XML file. Even though this file is an XML file and editable in an XML editor, typically uh, the user will edit these files in the graphical user interface and then save this as an XML file. After which you can, of course, modify this XML file if you prefer to work with text type interfaces and so forth. Then the Py file are Python scripts. Most of the model calculations in Visum that involve matrices or some other complex utility calculations and such are implemented with Python scripts. These are scripts that essentially correspond to your cube script if you're working with cube and a lot of the macros that you would typically have in let's say cube or cube script will now be seen in python scripts if you're using visum the gpa file is a graphic template file this file is used to store graphic templates or map templates once you have a nice map that you'd like to store and recycle for usage with other models or in other places then you can use this graphic template and load up this graphic template so you don't have to define all of the graphical settings from scratch. So this is something similar to what you do with ASRI, MXT, MXT type of files. The MTX, FMA or OMX, these are matrix data uh, files in various formats. MTX files can be binary or text. Same with FMA files. These are usually used for interfacing with VSIM. And then the OMX is the open matrix format, which is an HDF type file, which we have provided a hook to so that you can interface with any other existing activity-based models and so forth that use this OMX file format. Net files are a special text file in Visum. You can use these net file to create batch inputs. So if you like working with text editors to specify your networks, or other properties of network objects and then batch those in to Visum. This net file allows you to do that. So here you just have to specify a specific tabular format and then you can load this file into Visum uh, to add network elements and so forth. The DMD file is similar to the net file but it stores more of a demand model template and a demand model structure in Visum. So all of the market segments and so forth are defined with this DMD file. VPDP and VPDX files are scenario management related files. Visum offers integrated scenario management. So when you create a scenario, those scenarios are typically referenced through the VPDB file, which directly keeps uh, all of the folder structure and directories within the scenario in, in line. So this is kind of similar to a catalog and that sort of a file. The TRA file is a more specific version of a net file which has text inputs. Usually all of the scenario modifications or scenario edits or builds can be specified as transfer files. And these can be applied to the base model uh, in case you don't want to hold multiple version files of the base build forecast and so forth. Fill files are used as query filters. So in Visum, you can interactively specify SQL-like queries for the network objects and data tables. And these can then be stored as fill files. So you can load these up to see a pre-stored query for some sort of a conditional, let's say you want to filter links by link type, zone by CBD, non-CBD attributes and such. The LLA file is a list layout. And this list layout essentially stores a data view. So if you want to create different data views in Visum and store those as quick reference, then you can store that as an LLA file. And then all you have to do is load up the LLA file and it'll show you a data view that applies to that particular model. Now let's go over the IO interface and have a look at uh, how some of these work. So over here we have 
import export of common interfaces. So in Vizum, we support many different types of uh, file types for import and export. Some of the common file types that you might encounter while working with Vizum or on your projects would be these Esri shape files, which may have zonal linked data and such. The GTFS files, which you might use for editing a scenario and FTA stops and such, or bringing in more enriched transit line data into the model. And OpenStreetMap files, which basically have detailed transport networks and are openly available. Uh, so if you want to add more detail to your network, you might sometimes interface with these OpenStreetMap data. So let's have a look at how some of these imports work in Visum so that you have an idea of the workflow. Over here, I have a blank instance of Visum. So let's say you wanted to import a shapefile into this. You basically go to File, Shapefile, and you can see all of the various formats over here. You select the shapefile. Let's say I have an Esri shapefile stored over here. In this case, it's a zone data file. So it's got zone polygons and the data tables associated with that. I can select that, click open. Over here, we see that you can either read the file additively. So let's say you have a network preloaded and then you want to add this zone data onto that network. You would just check read additively. In this case, it's a blank network. So we can just have it read, read as zones. Different objects can be read in into different object containers over here. So here we are reading polygons or zone polygons with the DBF attached to it. And we just click OK. And while reading, it'll read up all of the attributes attached to that DBF file. So all of the column names over here will show up as the source attribute. In Visum, you will typically store these by creating user-defined attributes. So well, the reader will identify the most appropriate data type for those uh, columns. And then what you can do is generate those as user-defined attributes in Visum. And then that creates the target attributes for each of these different zone data. Then we just click OK. And then if you have a projection file attached to this particular shape file, it'll be brought into the proper coordinate system. And then you will see also this streaming map background and a positioning of the network accurately done for that. Now these are all the polygons that came in with this. Let's say you want to look at one of these polygons. You can simply click and look at this view. Then if you want to look at what projection system this file is stored in, you can go to network, network settings, and then coordinate system. This will bring in automatically the coordinate system that the file holds for the PRJ file and then link it in Visum so that the background map is aligned correctly with it. If you want to transform this into a different coordinate system, you can choose from the typical variety of coordinate systems that are applicable in your system. Sometimes you may go from a UTM system to a state plane or the other way. And in some cases, you may use the world WGS system to get lat long coordinates. So this is a general shapefile interface in Visum. Let's have a look at another uh, import type in Visum. And this would be the GTFS import. So again, if we go back to the import menu and then select GTFS, you can reference this GTFS zip file over here. Select the GTFS zip file. In this case, I have an Amtrak network stored in this GTFS file that I grabbed from one of the openly available feeds. You can select that. If you want to then filter down the timetable of that GTFS file, you can apply a date filter and then the importer will filter out all of the other trips from the GTFS file to retain only the ones that are available for that particular date filter. This we can just click OK. And 
and then you'll see an entire GTFS network imported with all of the stations and so forth. Now, if there are some warnings, those will be logged in the message log over here. While you import the file, if you see something in this message file that doesn't make sense, then you can check and correct that file accordingly. Now let's say you want to see some data over here with this GTFS file. You can click lines and to see some of the timetable information brought in, you can simply select one of the lines over here. You can have a look at it more closely. And if you want to look at the timetable for this, you can simply go to either the graphical or the tabular timetable. Let's have a look at the graphical timetable for this and that will show you all of the runs of this particular line. And similarly, you can have a tabular view of this. Now, if you want to edit this, it's also fully interactive. You can move these lines back and forth and adjust their departure times. If you want to create new journeys in it, um, you can click the Create Vehicle Journeys and Create New Journeys. And this provides you a convenient way to input timetables into an existing GTFS file and edit for purposes of stops analysis and so forth. Another common or typically used format these days is the OSM format. And if you want to import that, typically you will need the OSM XML-like file. I have one of these files downloaded here from the OpenStreetMap website and then I'll show you how to import this. So again, we go to File, Import, select the OpenStreetMap importer. With the OSM files, I just point the data to this OSM file that I've stored. This file is for Tallahassee. Select that. And then if you have a larger OSM region, it's possible to clip this network based on a bounding box. So in that case, you can click this, select your bounding box, and specify the coordinates of that bounding box. So a larger OSM network will be clipped into a smaller OSM network. Additionally, there are different resolutions to which you can import this network. So if you want only the larger trunk streets and so forth, you can select a more lower resolution network, and that way the local streets and small streets will be filtered out of the import. And finally, since this is open source data, you have to select and accept the terms and conditions of uh, OpenStreetMap licensing. And then simply click OK. So the OSM file is processed by Visum and converted into a routable network that you can either use directly for some of your analysis or then use as a base and then clean it up for further refinement for actual use with travel demand models. So here we see that a subsection of that network is imported. A bunch of data including the Non-motorized streets are also important, walkways and so forth. Then we can also have a look at all of this link data over here. Various different lookups are created and transport systems and modes over here are shown for each of these link types. So these default values are uh, populated automatically by Visum, but then the OSM values are stored as user-defined attributes over here and you can explore them through this. So if you wanted to map this back to the OSM data, you can use some of these IDs to map the data back into OSM to get a reference of what the original uh, data input was like. You can also see that the location of signals and such is also imported. This could be useful for you if you're trying to code in some uh, intersection control and such for your corridor models or trying to build SBA models and so forth in Visum. The network editing uh, 
also has junction editor and we'll have a look at that a little bit later in this session. So these are the basic IO interfaces in Visum. Um, there are many different interfaces, but these would be the typical interfaces or files that you would interface with in Visum. So we thought it was a good idea to show you the general interaction with these type of files. Next, we have listings and table views. These listings and table views are standardized across all Visum network layers. And these table views work in the same way. So that basically means that once you know how to work with a table, you know how to do it for any network object because then the same workflow applies to any network object for bringing in different attributes into the table view and saving the table view and so forth. These table views are also synchronized with network views. So when you select a certain network object in the table view, it also is highlighted in the actual network. These lists also have some functionality, which is Excel-like, uh, in that you can apply formula, in-place formula to these lists and table views, and you can also aggregate these or run group by statements if you're trying to quickly aggregate something to get an idea of, let's say, VMT grouping by link type, area type, and so forth. The tables also support a full delimited copy paste, so you can exchange this data with Excel or TextPad and such for quick editing. There's the usage of all of these uh, table views is also made convenient by offering layouts and templates. So once you have a certain table view, you can store that as a layout. That way you don't have to redefine the table view each time you want to look at the properties of let's say the zone data or link data and so forth. Again, these table views are all uh, accessible through COM. So let's say you want to try and automate some of these table views or table exports, then you can easily automate that by using COM and Python scripting. And we have all of these COM scripts and so forth in our repository. Uh, if you don't find any of these in the examples, we uh, obviously offer these through our support and, and help desk. Let's have a look at some examples of what you can do with these table views in Visum in an actual version file. So I have this model over here uh, for the Olympus model. Uh, you might be familiar with this if you've worked on F dot models. This is the training model. So let's say I wanted to have a look at the list of zones or table view for the zones. In that case, the workflow is go to lists, look at the network, and then go to zones. This brings up a default table view. Now, I have stored certain table views which show specific uh, columns or attributes in this particular uh, zone table. So these are referenced to this list layout over here. So let's say I want to see something like dwelling in population data. I can bring that up through this template. And then if I want to add or remove uh, new attributes to it. I can go for this select attributes tab over here a button Let's say I want to only look at Some basic data I can select a range over here remove that move this one and Reconfigure this table view to have the attributes that I want and then Click OK and change this table view now let's say this table view is something that you'll use uh, uh, over and over again. Then you can obviously go for list and then say save layout and then save this as another table view. So in this case, I just say table view and then click save. And that gives me a new template which can be re-referenced if you need it again. So over here, let's say I have now the employment school data and I want to switch back to that old temp a new template that I created go back to the new table view and that brings up the new table view this information can also be aggregated on the fly so let's say you wanted to aggregate some of this data on the fly um, 
that can be done by using the group by uh, statement available. So here, let's have a look at some of the links and the table view of links. So again, we have the same listings, network, and links view. I can set this view up for having, let's say, the volumes. Remove these for keeping the table view clear. And then have only the type number. Now there's one attribute over here, which is called the functional type, which I can find over here and then use that for aggregation. So here, if I look at this F type and then bring this up in the table view, I want to group these by the functional type and sum up the volumes by functional type. So what I'll do in this case is say aggregate and then I can define what type of function you want to apply similar to what you will typically do in a group by statement if you use SQL or if you use Excel pivot tables, this is again similar to that same sort of aggregation of data using an identifier. So here you have the option of having many different uh, operations on it. You can take the minimum, average, sum, weighted average, and so forth. In this case, let's take sum of all of the volumes and then click OK. And here you can see that all of the functional types and the volumes available for those are classified. Just expand this view. This way you can have a look at all of the volumes classified by these functional types. Now let's say you wanted to export this listing to Excel. That's as possible as well. In which case you can either directly lift this listing over here, right click, and say copy cells. I can fire up Excel. Over here in Excel, you can just do Control V and transfer that listing. Now this is one way of copying this data where you essentially select the data and then that's pasted as is. A more methodical way of doing this is by using the IDs. So let's say I have the zone listing over here and I have zone numbering given as a reference lookup. Then I can use this copy list clipboard and what this does is it also adds a key attribute that can be used as a lookup to populate zone data. So looking at this, we click OK, go back to Excel. Let's say I want to add another tab here. And this time when I do Control V, it lets me paste this data with a delimiter. So I'm just going to use that semicolon delimiter over here. So in this case, it looks like it might be And this way you'll see that all of the data is brought in with the delimiter and also the IDs. So now what you can do is modify this data over here and then paste this data back into Vizum by using the same listing interface, in which case you would go to paste contents and then map this data back into Vizum. This way the data is placed in the correct cells based on the identifier given over here. In case of this raw copy paste, uh, you can still do a copy paste and that's done without context. So depending on the type of operation you want to do or what you seek to do with your model data, one way might be easier than the other or more applicable than the other. So this is the list view. And then also this list view is synchronized with the zones. So let's say I select a few zones over here and go back to the network editor. It'll show me where these zones are. 
And this is true of most network objects in Vizum. So when you click a link in the table view, that link will be highlighted over here. So if you're troubleshooting a network, trying to find some problem areas, that makes things much easier to spot in the network for calibration and such. There are also in-place filters available over here. So let's say you wanted to filter these by some IDs and such. You can apply a filter. Let's say I want to see only larger than ID equal to 30. I can filter this list in place and see only zone numbers greater than 30. And this way, many of these columns can also be filtered in combination. So this is our table view and listing interface in Visum. It's pretty convenient, and once you get used to using it for one object, the workflow remains the same for all of the other objects. Next, we have a look at some of the basic network editing functionality. We go back to a slide deck over here and introduce some of those topics. So network editing is also standardized across all Vizum network layers. That means that once you're familiar with the editing workflow of one network object, that workflow is essentially standardized across all of the network objects. Once you know how to insert a node, you'll know how to insert a link, stop, stop points, line routes, and so forth. The interactive editing can be done for single or multiple network objects. So the spatial selection or a polygon selection and edit is all supported with Vizum. Bulk editing with formula and text files is also supported. And we have a full pan and zoom supported with a undo redo stack that you can set as a custom in terms of how many operations you want to store. Network editing in Vizum is also accessible through COM. So if you are looking to do some automated link insertions, link deletions, and such, these can be also automated through scripting. Now let's have a look at network editing in the actual Vizum interface and see how some of this workflow goes. We go back to our OSM import over here. Adding or deleting a link. Uh, let's say we want to now delete this link. The operation essentially is select the link in the links layer, select the link that you would like to delete, and then simply hit delete on your keyboard. And that deletes the link. Here you'll see that the node is still hanging over here. So let's say you want to also delete the node. You can click nodes, select the node, and again, press delete, and it goes away. Now, Vizum has a integrated network model or data model. So in this case, we were deleting link, a link and then a node. So we were going in the other order of dependency. But let's say I select this node and it's connected to a link and then I want to delete it, that will typically trigger also the link to be deleted. So this integrated network model keeps data objects consistent so you won't see a link without a node and so forth. Now let's say we want to add a new network object over here. The workflow for that is also fairly straightforward. Let's say I want to extend this particular link. What I would do in that case is pick nodes, go to the insert mode, point and click in the network where I want to add a node, then select the links. We want to add the link between this node and this node. I can add a link either directly or if this link is a polyline or shape link, then you can go and create all of the intermediate points and then add a link with the polyline. So all of these polylines will also be generated while you create the link. And Vizum handles polylines uh, as polylines, so none of these extra shape points will be generated as nodes. They're simply stored as the polyline. 
So that doesn't increase the number of nodes in your network. Then you can simply select what type of link you want from a lookup table. Let's say I just want one lane. If you want to create a one-way link, you can just click create opposite direction and that will block the other direction or keep it open and then click OK. So that generates your link. This is for single link insertion and such. And then let's say if you want to edit multiple links at the same time, you can select a link and hold your control key down and select as many links as you want over here. And then hit enter and then change the property of the link using this formula editor. So let's say I want to set the speed for all these links to a particular value. I can set that to, let's say, a constant of 40. Or if you want to apply a formula, you can also apply a formula by entering your formula expression over here. And this expression is similar to your Excel formula. So let's say, all, all I want to do in this case right now is scale the V0 or speed. I want to increase that speed by 1.2 times. You can just simply insert that formula or expression over here and click OK. And then the speed will be changed on those links. Apart from this, it's also possible to use a spatial selection mode and then edit multiple um, network objects at the same time. For that, we simply go to the spatial selection mode. You can hold control and draw a polygon in the network to select the area that you would want to modify. Complete the polygon and whatever is in that bounding polygon will be selected. Now here it's gonna show you the number of links, number of nodes and so forth that are active over here. If you want to edit these links now, you can simply cl right click and then say multi edit. Change the properties over here the same way that we did before. The only extra thing you will see over here is the only active ones. And what that means is that in this case, we are only editing the selection set. If you want to reselect all of these, you can simply go and reselect all of these and then go back to our usual edit mode. Looking at properties of any of these links is again fairly straightforward. You can just double click, look at the properties of the link. Let's say we wanted to add a curvature to one of these links, then we can just select the link, right click, and say permit interactive editing of geometry. Here we see the existing polyline points. If you want to remove any of these polyline points, you can just hold control and click the polyline point and get rid of some of these points. Otherwise, uh, you can move these points as well. If you want to add new polyline points, you can hold control and click in a location which doesn't have a polyline point already and then add new polyline points. So it's fairly intuitive uh, and straightforward to edit networks in Vizum. In addition to basic network editing for links, nodes, zones and such, uh, it's also possible to edit intersections in Vizum and it has a fairly user-friendly junction editor. Now let's say we want to focus on this particular area and add some detail to this intersection. We select nodes and then double click the node and this brings up what is known as the junction view. So here you can go to geometry and change the geometry at the intersection. You can add another turn bay or remove the turn bay. These are turn allocations that you can add or remove. And this lets you do basically 
interactive geometry editing. Similarly, we can add signal timings and also define details such as crosswalks and so forth. A lot of this detail can also be seamlessly exported to Visim um, for simulation. In Visum now, we also have a simulation-based assignment. So some of this geometry detail is also used by the simulation-based assignment in Visum. And that way, your entire model is kind of an integrated model, which you can easily toggle between dynamic assignment and static assignment. So these are the basics of the network editing functions or functionality in Visum. Another feature with the network editing is that all of the edits are stored in these undo redo stacks. So you can undo or redo any of these operations by simply clicking undo or then redo. This stack is modifiable. So if you go for edit and user preferences, you can set various things with the working environment, different properties over here. Over here, you can also set how many processors you use, and then also shows you the command history for the undo redo stack. The default is to store 20 activities or 20 edits, but you can change the number of edits based on what you're trying to do. Let's say you're building a pretty large tip and you want to store a, a greater number of edits in the memory so you can easily undo and redo. Uh, you can change this to a greater number and then use it that way. Another thing with network edits in Visum is that since the entire network is held in memory, unless and until you actually save or hit save, the data is not committed into the version file. So let's say something happens with your network editing and you are not able to remember what, hap what you did last or may have doubts about your uh, previous network editing entries and such, you can simply file exit Visum and none of that, none of those edits will be applied to your existing base version file. So this provides a good fallback option uh, in case you want to retain the state of that version file. Next, we take a look at some matrix editing functionality in Visum. Matrix editing is uh, possible with Visum interactively. Uh, you can use formula calculations interactively as well. Of course, matrix editing in general, matrix operations will be done in your procedure calculations, and that is applied through either formula or we offer a hook into Python scripting where you can retrieve the matrix as a NumPy metrics and run calculations on it. Here we discuss more of the interactive matrix editing because sometimes you might need that for troubleshooting and calibration of your network. Matrix editing supports much of the functionality that we saw with the listing data views. Uh, over here, it supports also the same type of clipboard data exchange with Excel. So you can selectively cut and paste some cells in it. On-the-fly aggreg aggregations are also supported, so you can produce district-to-district -district summaries on the fly for a quick view. You can put on-the-fly trip length distribution to analyze your trip distribution results and calibration and validation. And then we offer also a full range of post-processing functionality with splitting and merging of zones. And since Vizum has a consistent or integrated network model, if you add a zone in the network, it also redimensions the matrix and takes into account the newly added zone. If you remove the zone in a network, it redimensions the matrix and it'll accordingly uh, redimension the matrix as well. The matrix editing is also synchronized with the a network. So if you select a certain uh, zone OD pair, you can see that desire line or that marking as well. Again, all of the matrix editing is also provided through COM access, so that way uh, you can automate much of the matrix editing once you have basically the formula and so forth set up. 
let's have a look at some of these matrix calculations in Visum. Uh, so you have an idea of how those work with the interface. So I go back to this model again. Over here, I have several matrices. So to edit a matrix, we simply double click it. And that way it shows up in the matrix view. Now let's say I want to pick some cells over here. These cells will be shown in the network view. So whatever you click in this matrix editor is also highlighted correspondingly in the network view. This is again some a functionality that might be useful to you if you're troubleshooting your network or calibrating your model and so forth. Again, you can select a certain area, right click and run a formula on it. You can apply transform, quick transformations and so forth. It's also possible then to project matrices through some of these projection functionalities. In addition, uh, this is also something that supports copy paste operations. So you can copy these cells. And then again, back in Excel, paste this matrix data. And then this also works in the other direction. These matrices can be stored also to disk. So you can right click the matrix and then go for save to file. Pick the file format that you want to save the matrix in and then save the matrix as a matrix file. This way you can save some results into a matrix file and exchange these with uh, your other colleagues that you might be working with. Another functionality of this matrix editing is the trip length distribution. So let's say I want to see trip length distribution of a certain matrix. I can click that matrix and go for create histogram. I want to classify this matrix by trip length. So first I get rid of these and then I select my classification matrix in this view option. Here I say use classification matrix. Let's say I want to classify this by a trip length. So here I select the skim for trip length or distance in this case. I put zero decimal places. Once you select the classification matrix, you can create a new set of intervals. So let's say I put a lower limit over here and then upper limit 30 and then have 15 intervals. To classify that matrix, I just recalculate and that way you have a trip length distribution chart for it. So this way, if you're calibrating the model and need to interactively do these trip length distributions for various different market segments in your model, you can do these on the fly. And then eventually, this can also be automated to export bulk summaries when you run your models. Next, we look or have a look at the overview of model calculations. These model calculations are also flexible menu driven uh, and then also support an XML interface. Most of the model calculations in Visum are built in with multi-threading. So trip distribution, mode choice, and as well as your matrix calculation and such are all multi-threaded. These are also integrated with Python scripting, so you can call Python scripts in the model calculation procedures. Usually the models that you will see will have a series of operations with VZoom calculations uh, integrated with some Python calculations. Let's have a look at that in VZoom and see how that setup works. So here I go back to the same model we've been looking at. So the model calculations are stored in this calculate 
procedure sequence menu. You can see over here that there are various options for model calculations. We won't go too much in depth with this right now because we have another session later uh, in this session series where we'll touch uh, all of these things in more detail. But the general flow of the calculations can be seen over here. You can see some internal VZOOM skimming operations interfaced with then some Python scripts that call different trip generation, distribution procedures, utility calculations, and so forth. And then for traffic assignment, you can set up the multi-class assignment. You can set up also the iterations and gap calculation and so forth. And all of this is menu driven and this can be again stored to an XML file. So these can be stored to an XML procedure file which can be used in different models or you can exchange these with different models as a template and modify as you need. The way to set a volume delay function is through general procedure settings. So here we have delay functions as a lookup value for different functional types. Similarly for transit, we have different options for boarding, alighting, maximum walk access and so forth that can be defined for cutoffs over here. We'll have a look at all of these in much more detail when we cover the session on um, VZOOM procedure calculations later in these series. And lastly, uh, we have a look at the graphics and mapping functionality in VZOOM to give you an overview. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, graphics and mapping can be stored or graphics or maps can be stored in MXT type GPA files in VZOOM. And you can load those up for different models and then modify them as needed. Some of the map examples we have over here include your basic map view. Then let's say you want to have traffic flows in the network, then you can use the map for traffic flows. So this is your typical traffic flow link bar setup in VZOOM. The scaling for these can be set up using this edit graphics and then link bar parameters here you can specify the scaling of the attributes and so forth again this graphics parameters setup is also a fairly consistently defined one so once you know how to set up graphics for one object you'll have more or less an idea of how to do it for any of these objects so the workflow in general is the same for all objects then you also can see transit flows in the same way Then if you wanted to do a select link, you can click the select link template and go to the select link bar over here, select any link in the network, and then run the calculation. And that shows you the select link results. So you see the link bar traversing through and then also the origin and destination zones scale to the number of trips over here for the select link calculation. The select link is also offered in the same way for traffic as well as transit networks. So if you wanted to see a select link for transit, you simply load up this map template and have a look at, let's say a select link somewhere over here. So that shows you a select link again. Then we have a look at some other calculations, for example, isochrones or accessibility isochrones. You can load up this map template and let's say we want to go to a certain node isochrone, select isochrones in the menu here, nodes. We look at the transport system SOV, the route search criteria is congested travel time and then we can simply select a node and that gives us an isochrone view for the nodes over here. This also works in the same way for zones and main nodes. 
then you can also change it for various different transport systems or modes. It's also uh, modifiable with the type of impedance you want to use. So you can use a generalized cost or impedance, free flow time, congested time, distance, or a user defined type over here. Then lastly, zone ramping and color ramping of zones is also supported. So if you want to see accessibility, zone ramps and so forth, these type of graphics can also be easily displayed in VZOM. We're adding more 3D functionality in VZOM, so soon you will have more and more 3D type of functions for prism, link prisms, and so forth. But for now, we end the session with these graphics over here. Uh, looks like we don't have a huge amount of time for Q&A, but uh, I'm going to pass it to Johnson uh, so he can moderate the next part of this. All right, uh, thank you, Jaden. Uh, so we have received a couple of questions, uh, and uh, like you know, we're going to go through Q and A sessions. Um, and first question is, Jaden, you there? So first question is like, is this a link and node network or? similar to a shape file so first question again was like is this a link and node network or similar to a shape file yeah so this is actually a link uh, link and node network uh, shape files can be imported into it so let's say you have an a and b node id in the shape file those can be mapped to node numbers and imported so importing files that come from cube for example we have a specific cube importer or transcat type files can be imported using a transcat editor or importer. All right, that sounds good. And uh, second question is like, can you select the date for the OSM maps? Uh, we don't have an explicit setting for the date for OSM maps, but uh, that would depend on where you get your OSM map from. So as long as your XML file or that OSM .OSM file or BZ2 file is of a certain date or a vintage, we'll basically import that file as is. All right, thank you. Uh, and I think due to time constraints, I think I'll take this as a we're going to take this as a last question, and then like you know we're going to answer to the other set of questions that's flooding in now <laughs> through an email. So last question that we're going to try to address uh, during the session is, can we store sequence of steps for network change, uh, just like log file, for applying these changes to future years? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we had discussed this uh, TRA or transfer file uh, earlier in this session, and that is exactly what that file does. So a transfer file essentially has uh, network edit stored in a text file type format. So once you create all of your edits, you can convert a certain base network into a build network using this transfer file. So that's exactly the functionality that the transfer file offers. 